Go ahead, Jonathan. Tell me how to use the tool. So this is the Tracker Tracker tool from the Digital Methods Initiative. It's very simple. What you do is you copy and paste the URLs into this box. So we copy and then paste. And after doing that, you simply uh, name the results in the little text box at the bottom and click Track Trackers. And you will see a process log. And then after that's done, the results will be available right back at the top under the outputs menu. There is an error. What do we do when there is an error? Do we just ignore it? I think so, because I think it's just one, um, as far as I recall, there's one that's just um, down for maintenance. Okay. I believe that's what it is. Collating results. Okay. GXF. Yes, exactly. Here it is. So let's just open it. So here we don't need the edges to be directed. So I'm just going to have them undirected because they are basically just connections between the website and the tracker. And this has no specific direction. Okay. As soon as we open a network in Giphy, it has no shape. So the purpose of, of Giphy is first and foremost to give a shape to that network. Let's do it quick just to show what it looks like, but then we will have to fix something. Okay. So by using this panel on the left layout and by picking one of the layouts, I just picked Force Atlas 2 because that's the one that works best for me. And by clicking on run, you have a process where basically, um, let me show you the nodes repulse each other, but they are attached like by springs and it's like a physics simulation. And this helps the network get a shape where the connected nodes are closer. Just to understand what we have here, let's put the color on the node. So an appearance node, this is the little palette for the color. Let's check that. And then we go to partition and we pick the type attribute. So we, we will color the nodes by type and we apply that. And this way we can see different types of nodes that we have. And as you can see, we have these disconnected nodes that are in pink or fuchsia on the border. So those are URLs that are not connected to any other type. For instance, the error we have seen, like websites on maintenance or websites that don't use any tracker. I'm going to call them orphans because that's the language of networks. And just to have a picture that is uh, good to use, we don't want the orphans to be too far away from the main component because they eat up a lot of space. To do that, we have to check the stronger gravity setting and this will apply a super strong gravity. So now we have everyone together, but they are too packed. So we will lower the gravity. You see it's 1.0 and we do not hesitate to have it much lower. 0.1. Well, this is good because the orphans are separated enough from the main component. Maybe just a little less, 0.05. Okay, and now we are going to spread out everything. So to spread out everything is just scaling. It's currently two. Let's try 10. Not bad, but we want more. Let's try 100. Okay, and now we start to see what's happening. Before we go further, I just want to show two other networks that will give us a landmark about the kinds of networks we could have. If all the websites were connected to the same trackers, so we have here tracker A, B, C, D, E, and all the websites are around, we would have a nice round uh, 
hairball well packed with everyone together. So this would happen if all the websites use the same trackers. Now it's also possible that the websites use different trackers because for instance the industry is segmented. If that was the case we would see different clusters or different groups of websites and trackers. So let's go back to our case with that in mind. And one way to put it is to observe that we have something that is somehow in between. Maybe we could just tell a few words about the different categories of uh, nodes we have. Mm -hmm. The important message here is that uh, the pink ones are our initial input and all the other types have been found by Tracker Tracker and they are different kinds of tracking services that are connected or not to each of these URLs. So, so these lines are connections between URLs and forms of tracking. But these links uh, do not have the same size. That's because Tracker Tracker tells us if there is just one or multiple connections. But we don't want to use this information now. So I am going to remove the weights from the visualization just to make it cleaner. I am going to go in the data laboratory, which is basically the least view of the nodes and edges. You can see here the table of nodes. I'm going to go to the table of edges. And you can see there is a column named weight, where sometimes it's equal to one and sometimes it's equal to something else. Select everyone, right click, edit all edges. And now I'm going to put the weight to one. And if I go back to the overview, now we only have one size for the edges, which is easier to manage. And we are going to put the connections a little bit thicker with this slider on the bottom of the screen so that it's more obvious. Okay. So now let's identify the structures that we want to analyze. First of all, there are two different things. There is this big component in the middle and there are all these other islands on the side. So what does it mean? So I think this um, shows that a number of the websites either don't use tracking or they don't use uh, web trackers, which are included in the ghost tree database. So this big continent in the, in the middle is the URLs that have maybe some trackers in common. So let's look at Let's look at the um, trackers that are the most uh, used. So to do that, what I am going to do now is to put the more connected nodes bigger. So you can do that this way. In appearance node, you click on this button, which means size. So we're going to change the size of nodes using a ranking. And this ranking will be, sorry for the network lingo, the degree and degree which just means the number of neighbors. So let's apply that with the default settings. It gives a minimum size to the nodes with the less uh, uh, many neighbors and a max size to the nodes with the most neighbors. So we can tune them. Maybe the minimum size 10 was fine and for the maximum size maybe 30 would be better. Yeah, let's do that. So. Now we can see that some of the nodes are bigger and let's look at their colors. We have one big pink node, this is a URL, and we have big nodes of other colors. This URL has many trackers and this tracker is used by many URLs and this one and this one is used by many URLs. Let me just show their names, you have to check the big T on the bottom, it's going to be very confusing for a moment, but we can change here the size of the labels depending on the size of the nodes. It helps. And then we can tune the size of all the labels so that we have something readable. So those are Facebook Connect, Google Analytics, and double click. Do you know them? Yeah, this is this is fascinating because uh, these are the same uh, two companies because DoubleClick is now owned 
by Google, mm. who have at various points um, stated they want to take action against anti-vax websites. So it's clear that we can see that despite that, many of these websites still use or try to use these technologies. Let's check this one, ageofautism.com. Do you know this uh, website? Yeah, this is a, a quite a prominent uh, website that has associated um, vaccinations with autism and which has also been, I believe, active around uh, COVID-19. There is something super specific with this website. So, of course, it uses many trackers, but that's only half of the story. The other half is that a lot of these trackers are not used by any other uh, website in our list. So these are basically websites not used by anti-vax websites, except this one. And if you zoom in, you can see that some of them, like OpenX and AppNexus, are um, associated with programmatic advertising. And that's where we have advertisements which are um, produced in relation to audience data in fractions of a second, where there are um, different companies bid for the attention of their audiences. So this is clearly a website which is experimenting with these technologies. We have a lot of trackers. Uh, is, is it to be expected? It's interesting. It clearly shows there's the aspiration to monetize content through advertising, through the presence of advertising related trackers. Though, of course, we don't necessarily know whether that means that advertisements are being served. It just means that that's how the websites are configured. It's also interesting to see uh, the different styles of configuration of these websites. Well, isn't everyone using Google Analytics anyways? It's true. If you're interested in uh, looking at advertising, you could potentially remove the analytics. I guess it's also interesting because once you know that these websites are using Google Analytics, you can also um, go into the source code of the websites and see what the Google Analytics IDs are mm. and then uh, discover new associations between websites based on those IDs, including associations which might not otherwise be obvious. So um, by establishing that these websites use Google Analytics, you can then go on to take another step, which is to, to use the IDs in order to do other kinds of investigative research. Okay, great. And I guess it's interesting because what you're learning here is not only about the monetization strategies of these websites, but also their publishing infrastructures, what they're using to build their websites. So we saw above just now, uh, you had Gravatar, mm -hmm. um, which means that there is an interest in having like user profiles. Some uh, features that these websites have include member areas for members to log in, mm. and that can sometimes be based on subscription. And that's interesting there to see the WordPress stats uh, in Where blue just to the right. Oh, OK. Underneath. Yeah. That's fantastic because it tells you, um, as you can see from the website here, that you have uh, WordPress.com. But it also suggests that um, WordPress, a kind of open source content management system, is being used as a publication mechanism. So what are the takeaways here? We have kind of a contrasted landscape. I think um, very clearly the dominance of um, tracker technologies from large technology companies like Google and Facebook. The fact that we have um, that one website in the bottom left uh, experimenting with a number of different tracking technologies is interesting. Um, on the whole, one thing that's different to mainstream media websites is they tend to have a lot more customized configurations and different sorts of um, advertising and tracking products. And here you see there's obviously a strong focus on things which are well known and familiar and kind of off the shelf mm. and indeed cheap or free, with the exception of Age of Autism down in the left. So what do you think about the structure of the network? Clearly, there is a center and there is a periphery. The center is made of double click, Facebook Connect and Google Analytics. And as you have said, those are the most common, most well-known uh, monetization services. But there is also a periphery. And the big one here is Age of Autism. But it also tells us that a number of minor actors have different strategies. We could identify if we wanted to and if we wanted to analyze further, we could identify the websites that have the most uh, common strategies like this one in the middle and the website that have the most deviant or alternative strategies like this one, like age of autism and so on. 
So this is one direction. And the other direction is to uh, look at if there are clusters. So of course, there are, there are no major clusters. But there is still kind of a difference between whether you are on this side and, or the other side. Uh, if I wanted to contrast these anti-vax websites considering their preferred trackers, I could do that by looking at on which side they are. Are they more on the side of Facebook Connect, Google Analytics, or double click? And there are no very strong clusters here to me, except on this Google Analytics side. And this means something. It means that, and it's an observation you've, you've done before, we have different strategies, but they are not oppositive. We cannot say that there is a winning strategy that everyone uses. We cannot say that it's the same actor using the same strategy every time. This means to me that we have many different actors because they've made many different choices. Great. So I guess um, this can be used as an exploratory device to identify um, other lines of inquiry, which could be accompanied by desk research or other forms of observation, such as looking in the source code of the websites or looking at the user interface or indeed seeing whether um, advertisements are actually being served. So you can go to the website to see whether the um, associated ad is being served. So from there, we are going to use this visualization as a way to get oriented in the rest of the inquiry. The network tells us where to go, but for the answers, we have to find them outside of this network. Now that we are happy with our network, basically it's readable and we have invested our mental energy into understanding its structure. We don't want to lose it. So first of all, let's save the data. So to do that, the proper way is to do file, export, graph file. GEXF is the right format. Let's save it. The tip here is to not use the save feature because the save feature depends on the version of Giphy. And I suspect that you are working on a longer time. So maybe in a few years you want to reopen this data and the Giphy version has changed and you will not be able to do so. So that's why I'm using the export. Now we want to produce an image just for reading the network without opening Giphy. So this happens in the preview window. And when you arrive here, you have to click on refresh to see the network. We can use different presets to have different styles of images. I recommend default straight because curved edges are for oriented edges. And here we have not oriented edges, so they should be straight. And now you can see we have to change a few things so that is readable. For instance, the, the text is far too big. So you can just tune the settings here in node labels font. You can change the size. Maybe just three would be enough. Let's click on refresh. Let's zoom. I am going to do another tuning which is that I don't like these borders around the nodes because they interfere with reading the labels. So I'm going to remove them. Node border width zero. And I'm going to put the edges a little bit thicker. Edges, thickness, let's pass from one to two. Refresh. Yes, I'm more happy with that. And now to export, export. And let's make PDF. Let's open it. Here it is. One last thing that is important and easily overlooked. This PDF doesn't have any legend, but we want to remember the colors. So the last thing we want to do now is to go back to overview. Where we have our, our legend, our colors, and take a screenshot and save it. Uh, so that we can remember the colors. And I think we are done.